Hinduism. Hinduism is said to be the oldest religion in the world. The term itself comes from the word India and refers to a wide variety of religious traditions and philosophies that have developed in India over thousands of years. This is the Hindu temple of Minnesota. Though the temple is nestled among the meadows of Maple Grove, it is comparable to the temples in India, being built according to the Vastu Shastra, a traditional system of Hindu architectural design based on directional alignments. Ancient texts say, the gods always play where groves, rivers, mountains, and springs are near. Not surprisingly, many temples are built in lush valleys or groves. Um, these are the main doors that you see here. They were imported from India. The very first door is a 10-foot square. Okay. Typically, they say back in India, you have to, you need a ten, uh, elephant to open a door. It's essentially, that's how heavy that door is. This temple has to face true east. And uh, there is a line here. The center of the line is uh, essentially, this is the center of line. This, this line through east, even it goes through that flag that you see here. So on, on uh, March 21st, when the sun is out, if you do open this door, sunlight goes into the, the Varadaraja temple. India being primarily in the tropical area and the temperate zone, the temples can be on the outside, people can, are comfortably dressed. They can go from one place of worship to the next place of worship without any major concern as we have in Minnesota. When it snows six months a year, it's cold, it's difficult to put on the shoes, put on the coats and move from one place of worship to another. So what we had to do was bring all the places of worship under one roof. Within this temple, there are 21 mini temples or shrines of worship. The exterior of each shrine has been carved by trained temple sculptors from India. According to tradition, after the temple consecration ceremony, powerful mantras are recited over 45 days invoking statues with spiritual energy or prana. Though there are 21 shrines, Hindus in reality believe in one supreme reality. The Brahman, or God, is known by many names and is shown in many forms throughout India. Devotees find one or more favorite image of the same single Brahma and establish a communion with it through the icons in the temples. Uh, India is a very diverse country. It is diverse culturally. It is diverse linguistically. It is diverse even geographically. And uh, so every, every state of India has its own favorite name for God, has its own favorite form for God, form in which God is represented. I can give you many examples. So in, uh, in south of India as a whole, the favorite form of God is Shiva. If you go to the east of India, in Bengal, the favorite form of God is feminine. It is Durga. If you go to west of India in Maharashtra, the favorite form of God is Ganesha, which is a sort of a, a, a human being with a head of an elephant. You may have seen images of Ganesha. So there are many names and there are many forms. But Hindus today understand that these many names and forms should not be taken to mean that there are many gods. They are the many names and the many forms of one of the one God. Because God is infinite, God has infinite names and God has infinite forms. But God can have infinite names and infinite forms and still be one. 
The temple also has a school, auditorium, and dining hall, where community members gather for events like weddings and fundraisers. Um, we're gonna do a play, Bhakta Prahlad. Gagana Sadrusham Me Khavarenam Shubhangam Lakshmi I want to kill the child when he is born. Not iron, not iron. No one with any sense would think of harming children. King, leave this queen and unborn child with me. Dear Lord, I want immortality. You can't have immortality because all that is born must die. When this temple was built, that was one of the happiest moments that we had. That there is a place where I can show my child that this is how we pray back in India. This is how I can, my our culture is, looks like. And so they have some exposure to our culture. Not only that, I mean, we have a nice uh, school that is now in, in this, uh, as a part of uh, teaching Hindu values. We have what is called as Hindu American Temple School. And the temple said they really want a school to get started. And so if we could get some like-minded families, they'd be willing to offer us all the space we need so that's how the temple school started. Uh, the very first year we had 105 children and this year we had 180 children. So me and my wife and there are about uh, 20 other families, we are very actively engaged in teaching about our traditions, our religion, our culture to uh, students in our community. Uh, the school is open to Hindus, non-Hindus, Indians, non-Indians, anybody who lives here. Hindus believe that one's spiritual path may be found through either devotion, austerity, meditation, scriptural studies, selfless service, or through a combination of any of these. Hindus believe in the law of karma, which also says that each person's words and actions create their own destinies. I think one of the proudest movements that I've had as a, a Hindu Minnesotan is the way in which uh, the Hindu temple here in Maple Grove dealt with what could have been a very tragic situation and that was the vandalism that the temple um, was a victim of right before the grand opening of the temple. And um, what was really inspiring was to see the temple leaders look back to our teachings and especially the teaching of forgiveness and of nonviolence and apply that in their approach towards these two young teenagers who came in and did a great deal of damage. And uh, from what my understanding is now, those uh, uh, young men have grown up to be uh, contributing, positively contributing members of our community. And um, it was really a demonstration of, of philosophy and action, which I'm quite proud of. Some argue that Hinduism isn't necessarily a religion, but a way of life.